that's my other worry. Um, like, how can you promote it without confusing your audience? Like, what's the strategy? Um, is it purely just from email? Or like, do you create a brand new social media to promote that kind of program? Um, yeah, I yeah, think so it's 100% um, through email. So okay. for example, you're going to get a situation where you have uh, leads coming in every day and they go through some sort of automation system, some sort of conversion process. And, you know, there's two schools of thought here. So I know from promoting Legendary Marketer um, that most people who buy into the uh, $7 Business Builder Challenge convert to the blueprints in like the eight to 12 day window. Now, obviously 60 to 70 to 75% of your money is going to come from the blueprint commission. So that's an important, uh, you know, revenue uh, engine there. And then beyond that, you know, you won't see as many uh, conversions after that 12 to 14 day window. However, you probably know that you also get those three month conversions where it's like they've kind of gone through at their own pace. And then Three months later, they decide to, to jump into the blueprint. So one school of thought is, is that, hey, just keep marketing the same thing again and again and again and again and again and again until someone uns unsubscribes, knowing that, hey, now you've got all these people as your list grows who are kind of on the fence. And that's kind of what helps the the you know, snowball effect, if you will, or the exponential growth that you've already probably seen. Um, but the other school of thought is, hey, by the time you get to 30 days of Follow up about the same program. Ninety five percent of your list is tuned out, right? It's they're ad blind, so to mm -hmm. speak. Or it's like I'm I'm done listening about this. It's not for me. They've already made their decision. Well, okay. So if you're gonna just forsake ninety five percent of your list at that point, that seems like kind of a waste of an opportunity. So what I say is, if you are gonna promote something else, don't create more social media because then instead of uh, focusing one hundred percent of your created creative efforts on your main account. Now you're putting 50% of your efforts on your main account 50. And so it's like both accounts just suffer and you don't get traction. You don't get, you don't get growth and it's just, it ends up killing them both. So if you're looking to promote something else, then extend another 30 day window after the first 30 days where you promote something else. But just remember mm -hmm. like, once people exit your first automated sequence or your first 30 days of follow-up, they're not going to automatically just jump on the next thing. They're going to need time to warm up to it, just like they do with whatever you're promoting on the front end. So it's like, okay, maybe in month two, now I promote program B, but I hit it hard for 30 days. So I, hopefully that makes sense. Yeah. 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 That hundred percent. Exactly. Yeah, like I had, I was so scared in the beginning too when I was promoting legendary, and I decided to promote promote something else. So I was, I had the same. Uh, I was afraid of having that confusion with my list, right? So what I did in the beginning because I was afraid was I, I separate, I created a new list. So I separated the list. So it was a legendary marketer list, and I had a different programs list for my email marketing, and then I did different accounts on social media. So basically, I kept my legendary people right here, and I kept my other pro product right here. So I kept them separate, and I did that for, I don't know, six months, I guess you can say that. And it worked. I mean, I was getting commissions from both sides, right? But just how Brian said, you know, all those people that were still thinking about legendary market, they never had that extra option to go somewhere else. You know, maybe they did, um, maybe they did go through the program, but they didn't find the results that they wanted. So then for those people, they're just stuck with those no results type of thing, instead of offering something else that they, it could work even better for them, you know, depending where they were in their, in their life and their aspect of their business. So I don't know if you, I would, I would just keep them separate. Um, but if not, um, in the beginning, like I say, in the beginning I did that, but after that, I just combine everything and then I just, I rather have them buy A or B, you know what I mean? Instead of just buying A or not buying nothing. Mm, mm, yeah, that yeah. makes sense. We got really, you know, I get really uh, scared about confusing the audience, right? Because, you know, I say the confused buyer doesn't buy. But, you know, what Andre just said there, and that's why I kind of wanted to jump in. I didn't mean to cut you off. But back in episode 10, uh, Igor Kafetz, who's a brilliant marketer, he was on. And he addressed that in that episode where he, and he said exactly what Andre said. He's like, yeah, there is some confusion when you're promoting multiple products. Because his model is he sells his own product up front with ads. So that grows his list. His product basically creates a buyer's list, but then also pays for his ads. It's a self-liquidating offer. And then via email, he promotes launches and other products and stuff like that. And 
So that's his model. And he's been very successful with it. And he's, that's exactly what he said. He's like, yeah, there is a little bit of confusion, but I'd rather have them buy A or B rather than A or nothing. So a lot of things to consider, but really interesting insight from Andre and Igor. Yeah, that, thank you. That's so much value. I'm definitely going to look into that.